director of Art and Collection and a jewelry designer, a stylist, and sometimes a social commentator. So today we're going to be talking about uh, Azule affecting everybody, one way or the other. You know, we used to think it was uh, associated with uh, art or intellectual properties before, but now, <laughs> you know, it's, it's really, it's really uh, spreading fast. And this issue is the issue of plagiarism. Now, I've had my more than a fair share of uh, plagiarism as an artist and you know it has been really crazy for me and you know if we say that it's now a global issue with the millennia and uh, millennia Trump and uh, Michelle Obama's speech you know the plagiarism and all now let me talk about my own experience with um, plagiarism I remember when I started putting together collections you know shoots and the rest I remember the first one Okay, well, not the first one, for, but for bridal jewelry, because I didn't start out with um, bridal jewelry. I remember the shoots for the bridal jewelry I did. And to be specific, the, the Bell and the Jewel collection, you know, it really went viral and stopped. I had, you know, signature designs in it. I sat down, created innovative designs. And of course, you know Nigerians copy, copy. So this, uh, this particular design, my loopy loop design, this lady, she copied it. And she didn't copy it well. I know Nigerians are so funny, they're so desperate for sales. You know what they will do? They will go and meet the client. Okay, the client says, ah, hey, I want to I want to go and give so 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 person being an art made this uh, jewelry to make for me. They say, Oh, I can do it, I can even do it better for cheaper. Being an art made, you know it's expensive, it's premium, his clients are big, big, big. Me, I don't have big clients, let me do it for you. Maybe something that I would have sold for thirty-five uh, thousand. So oh, come, I'll do it for you fifteen thousand. So it happened. Now this lady got trapped. She had never tried it before, but she just jumped at the opportunity. Now I remember she called me. I think I woke up in the middle of the night to uh, use the restroom or something, or maybe to pray. One of the two things. And then I saw someone call me. I was like, Ah, who be calling me this late in night? And it wasn't a number I was familiar with. So I said, Okay, <laughs> God forbid, though. Oh, this is not an emergency. Let me pick it. And lo and behold, this was a crying woman. I'm like, what is what is happening? I know you don't know me from anywhere. She, that's how she's talking. I know you don't know me from anywhere, but I follow your works. I do this, I do that. And there's one of your designs that I'm copying for a customer. I'm like, oh, really? And now that I'm delivering it tomorrow morning, the wedding is 12 o'clock tomorrow, and I'm trapped. I, I can't make sense of it. Please, can you just teach me? Can you guide me? I'm like, okay. In the first place, it is not your design. You don't know how I went about it. So why didn't you just tell the customer that, you know what, I cannot do this one exactly, but I can do something else for you. Or maybe similar, or maybe try it out before saying you could do it. Now, what do you want me to do? Even if I'm to help you, how am I going to give you, uh, you know, let's call it virtual tutorial via phone, telling you do it like this, do it like that, that it doesn't work. I was even kind enough to tell her that, you know, <laughs> I cannot, you cannot get it with, uh, with, with me giving you the description with words, you know. So it's really crazy. And then another incident again, I think that was last year. I think last year or 2014. This is the most common one. People stealing your pictures and using it for advertorial use on the, um, the Facebook page, Instagram page. Without credit, of course, the ones people to believe that is their work. This lady, she follows me bumper to bumper. As I want to say bumper to bumper. If I post a picture this minute, later, it's five minutes later, she has picked the picture, cleaned my watermark, put as there, and posted it on her page as her. So it has been going on for a very long time. Even the pictures with my clients working my piece, she will cut off their head and then put her watermark on it. So it became so bad. And it, uh, Particularly, it was this particular one with NHN Kuto. I know NHN Kuto, if you follow her, she's a popular face all over Lagos magazine and all that. And, you know, someone called her attention and, you know, also called my attention to it. I saw I was screaming. Like, it felt like a subsidiary of Artmeet Collections page. She had all my works. And people were actually accusing her that this is not a work. Put it down. This lady was busy deleting comments. And some of them, she was even, you know, wagging her tongue saying all sorts of things against them attacking the people that were attacking her that see guy yeah, yeah, plagiarist put down his pictures and eventually i had to call this lady <laughs> this lady blasted me do you know what she said she said i the only creative person that is it only you 
Uh, are you the only one? I can't do it. Okay, you can do it. Why didn't you do it and put the picture of the one that you did? That what is it gone? All you these people, you think when you are big, you can just talk to people when you are blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, really? And then I started to take it off. I called my lawyers and everything. I'd say, yeah. In fact, before I could even get through to my lawyers, because I remember I called, I, I called him and it wasn't reachable. I sent him a message. Before then, some lawyers, I didn't even know I had those kind of lawyers following me on Facebook because I had to, you know, put the notice out there that, okay, there's this lady that is going about parading my works as us. Beware of her. This lawyer has just came from nowhere. One of them had already served their notice. I'm forgetting what the notice is called. That if you don't put down that picture and issue a public apology, that you are going to blame yourself. So, you know, they just bring, this just brings us to the issue of how much people practice plagiarism without care, with so much imp impunity, because really, there's really no deterrent for it, let's face it. Yes, we have copyright laws, but how viable are copyright laws? How, how effective are, 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 are these laws? You understand? You go to CAC, you uh, incorporate your business, you copyright your intellectual property and everything, but yet you're still struggling with plagiarism. And it's so bad because these people plagiarizing your work, they end up making more sales than you. Because they are busy telling people, oh, you can get it cheaper from us. And there are some unsuspecting customers who will make, um, who, who would order for these things. And we won't see that there's a huge difference, there's a life and death difference between what this uh, plagiarism is for them and your own work. So you are busy trying to sell at least one or two of the work that you went through so much frustration to create. And these people, they are busy making, they are, they are busy making um, sales on sales of 10 sets of a particular design that you sweated it out to create do you understand so really is is a very very crazy thing and it's just i think it has to do with the herd mentality of nigeria herd as an h h e r d you no know, once uh it addresses that a business is successful and then it's doing well they just want to jump on the bad bandwagon let's say for example egro as at 10 years ago, Ego wasn't such a popular thing in Nigeria. What we had was Puff Puff, Bones, uh, Ojojo, and the rest. But it just took one person to start making Ego, you know, as an alternative to Scotch Egg. Of course, we know that Scotch Egg, it requires more. And people say, okay, we can afford Scotch Egg, we, we, uh, afford, we can afford Ego. And eventually, even people who could afford Scotch Egg started buying Ego. Then it became a popular phenomenon, a national phenomenon. Everywhere you go to in Nigeria, you find someone frying egg roll. So it has to do with the egg mentality, and because there are no, there are no sanctions for these things, really. You understand? They don't say it as a big deal. Like so, so, uh, for those uh, frying egg roll, they say, "Oh, okay, I'm the only one that can fry. I'm the only one that can." But you know, they also feel like <laughs> everybody is entitled to uh, whatever you have. You know, they feel, "Oh, okay." You have this thing, it's not exclusive to you. I have a right to it. This feeling of entitlement that, oh, okay, chop, make I chop. You know, that kind of mentality is really, 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 really crazy. And it's damaging a lot of things. It's killing a lot of brands. Some people don't have uh, thick skin. Some people don't know how to endure. And they, they fizzle out of business. And it's really, 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 really bad. And then there's this very funny one that happened. You know, Nigerians just love to chop where there's a gold mine. They just love to rip away the didn't so and it's really crazy there's this photo shoot that i did with uh sniper jigs and talking faces no just one random shoot well actually the ones that we, uh, let's say we, let's call ourselves the foreigners the uh the the what's it called now no. uh, the pioneers yes we're actually the pioneers of uh, this uh, uh, avant-garde gilly and the rest and avant-garde deck pieces you know this was what the shit was about high fashion like, okay why not do something high fashion for uh, you know the conventional the conventional bridal jewelry shoots conventional bridal shoots let's not even talk about just jewelry the many people are just used to seeing we're just used to seeing the iran booba with the uh, beads the gilly and the rest so I said okay let's put it twist with let's let's uh, chip in some creativity into it and then i started to style the shoot i made this really flamboyant and dramatic necklace and then i had uh, i got um talking faces the makeup artist to you know tie the gilly in an unconventional way you know it really went viral you know italian blogs featured it so many blogs uh, uh, featured it and the rest not just blogs featured it 
our inner boys they featured it they printed it on tops they went they took the pictures to china printed it on tops and started selling it in balogu market computer village and everything i was shocked the first day i was passing by uh, passing through i think breadfruit in um, lagos island and then i saw this uh, lady what was she selling i think granite or some one of these things wearing it I, and then i was like this is my work now on her chest and i was staring embarrassingly hard at her chest and you no know, even she was looking at what's this guy looking i was so shocked to like this is my work. I, do, I don't understand. Why would anybody want to put a picture of a lady wearing a dramatic necklace and on the top? They are wearing somebody's face on, on, your, on, on your chest. She's not a Chanel. She's not a Beyonce. I know about, you know, growing up, we've been seeing a lot of that. Michael Jackson printed on top. But I don't understand. Someone's work, and you put it on uh, the top. I was too shocked. Like, that was not enough. The next, of course, this one is even very popular. They just pick up your, uh, they just pick up pictures of your works on the net, and then they print them in magazines. They will use it on the magazine cover without credits, without permission, without apologies, without anything, without even no talks about okay profit sharing and all. But you go to a lawyer, you tell them, and this is the problem: is it's not so much about the copyright law not being effective. Even the lawyers are very very complacent, you know. I went to a lawyer and I said, you know what, I want to take up this case because that magazine sold like hot cake. You know, it sold with my own, so many of them like that, but this particular one sold like hot cake using my own content and no credit for me, no profit for me, nothing, nothing. And I said, you know what, I want to sue this person. You know what the lawyer told me? He said, Menga is, is a worthless battle. That this is a battle that one year, two years after, you've not won it. That you may win eventually, but you spend a lot of money. I said, I don't mind spending a lot of money. He said, it's not just a lot of money, frustration, a lot of capital, a lot of adjournments and all that. That even these guys, they have connections, they will frustrate you, blah, blah. I said, okay, is this a good enough reason not to fight this case? And, you know, eventually the lawyer even started avoiding me. Like, see, I've told you that this case, you won't win it so bad. This is the problem. So many, even multinationals face this issue with plagiarism and you know, it, it seems like nobody is doing anything about it. People just feel, oh, okay, it's normal. They, even many people now are so frustrated that they just feel, oh, I'm, I can't be bothered again. I'm no longer doing it. Okay, see the issues. See the issue with our bloggers, our Nigerian bloggers. You know, one, once once uh, one headline or one story or one news begins to, you know, make the rounds, they jump at it. Okay, maybe... For example, so 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 star actress caught in um, a sexual uh, scandal with blah 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 blah. One person is uh, is going to be the first person to reveal the details. The next thing, the, other, the the rest of them begin to, you know, pick the news. Now the problem is not with them featuring the news. The problem is with them using the news verbatim, you know, without uh, without crediting the original source. Like okay, called from the nation newspaper or whatever. They copy word for word pictures and everything without credit, and they get all the praise and everything. Eventually, even the original source doesn't get the praise. People begin to credit uh, another person who, who stole it from the other person. You know, it's really, really frustrating. We find it everywhere. It happens, every, they plagiarize everything. I'm even surprised we've not started plagiarizing our lives because we plagiarize even accents, everything. You want to sound like, you want to sound like a French man, you want to sound like a white man. It's really really crazy and you no know, this has to stop but how do we go about it the copyright laws the copyright laws are not effective lawyers are complacent these things are going on what do we do about it please share your views